Hey, what's going on everyone? Daniel Betancourt here with Team Betancourt. And today I'm going to be covering frequently asked questions in the home buying process. And the first question on the list is what's the first step in the home buying process? So this is one we get all the time. Usually the first step for a home buyer is to contact a real estate professional like myself. I'm a real estate agent. I've been selling real estate here in Florida for over 18 years. So the first step is usually get a recommendation for a great realtor and they're going to guide you through the traditional first step which is obtain a mortgage pre-approval so when you obtain a mortgage pre-approval you're going to communicate with a mortgage professional and they're going to help you establish a price range for you to be shopping in you want to establish a price and a payment that's doable for you and comfortable for you before you start the home buying process sometimes the mortgage lender can approve you for a payment that's more than what you're comfortable for so it's okay for you to dial that back a little bit because no one knows your finances better than you but the first step is to get connected with a great realtor and then get pre-approved for a mortgage next question on the list is how long does it take to purchase a home so after you've gotten pre-approved for a home loan when you're communicating with your realtor you're going to give your agent a list of must-haves in your new home and that agent's gonna get to work and help you find homes to go visit until you find one that you'd like to make an offer on and hopefully your offer is strong enough for your offer to get accepted sometimes it takes a few offers before you get one of those offers accepted so the process in best case scenario can take about 40 days let's say you get pre-approved on day one you start shopping on day two it takes you about 10 days to find a home make an offer get that offer accepted from that point it's about a 30-day process from the time that you get your offer accepted it's about a 30-day process before you close and that process includes you giving your deposit you doing your home inspection you doing your home appraisal and you satisfying any of the documents that your mortgage lender requires before you can close and then you close successfully on that closing date another question that i get from buyers is what do realtors do to help home buyers so the short answer is all of it in a sense we're helping buyers locate homes we're helping buyers identify what's most important to them in the home buying process and we're helping set up visits and schedule appointments to visit those homes we're also helping you write offers which which are contracts you know those are unilateral contracts when you're making an offer to a seller and if the seller accepts your offer that's a bilateral contract that means they've accepted your offer and both parties are obligated to those contract terms then we're guiding you through the process of making a deposit scheduling your home inspection and, and walking through the steps of that home inspection process if the home inspection reveals some deal breakers or any kind of groundbreaking problems we can either help you negotiate through that or we can help you get out of that contract without any penalties we'll also help guide you along with your mortgage lender satisfy all of the financial information that's required as you're purchasing your home and then hopefully we just slide into a home plate at the end with a successful closing and you get the keys then you schedule your housewarming party the next question on the list from buyers is what do I have to pay in the home buying process so if you're a buyer and you're a cash buyer then usually your closing costs are going to be less than 1% of the purchase price there are always closing costs for the buyer and there are always closing costs for the seller and it's a uh, it's a myth that one party pays them all or the seller pays them all on this process and the buyer pays them all on that process both the buyer and seller have closing costs all the time on every transaction if you're financing a home your mortgage lender is going to give you a loan estimate which is going to be a breakdown of all of your closing costs which is going to consist of lender fees and title fees and insurance to cover your home if something were to happen to it in the future if if you're buying a home in a homeowners association community there might be some capital contribution or initiation fees so your mortgage lender is going to help you identify exactly what your closing costs are going to be you could rough estimate sometimes three to four percent of the purchase price when you're purchasing a home as closing costs but it also depends on how much of a loan you're taking out how much of a down payment so there's so many variables it's best to communicate with a professional on that and that professional is usually going to be the mortgage lender that's assisting you with your home loan one question I've gotten a lot in the past is what's your number one tip 
to someone purchasing a home. And I'd have to say as a professional in real estate to trust the professionals, trust the folks that you hired to help guide you through this process. So as a realtor, I'm going to help you determine what's a good price to pay for the home, what's a good offer to make to the seller, I'm going to help you determine during that home inspection period, which issues on that home inspection might be more cosmetic, which ones are more serious. And it's really important to lean on the home inspector during that home inspection process because they're also professionals in that area. Uh, as realtors, you know, I don't climb on the roof. I don't climb into the attic. I don't check out all the electrical functions. So when you're having a home inspection done, it's really important to lean on your home inspector that you've hired and get their professional opinion on the issues that they found. And as realtors, we can help you negotiate the resolution for those issues that were found on the home inspection. Again, an appraiser, if you're borrowing money to purchase a home, an appraiser is going to create an appraisal report that tells the lender how much the home is worth. And these are all various professionals that are involved in the real estate transaction. And you have title professionals who are making sure that the home you buy has no lingering debts from the seller when you close. So there are lots of professionals that are working on this transaction to help make this transaction a successful one for you as a buyer. So you want to trust those professionals as you navigate through the home buying process. One of the questions that I get a lot from home buyers is what's the credit score necessary to purchase a home? So in reality, this question is more of a question for a mortgage lender because they are the ones that help you obtain financing for the home. A lot of lenders I hear some Sometimes their minimum credit score required is a 620 credit score. And remember, you have three credit scores, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Usually those mortgage lenders will use the middle score. So if you have a 650 score, a 600 score, and a 625 score, they'll use that 625 score uh, for the process. But there are lenders out there, over the years I've seen lenders say they can do mortgages for buyers with a credit score of 580. So it's really important to communicate with a mortgage lender, and if your credit scores are lower than the minimum, there are ways that we can help you get your credit scores up. We also have credit help professionals who can help you with that. Your mortgage lender is usually an expert on how to get your credit scores up. But something to remember is when you're purchasing a home, especially if you're financing, there's more to it than just your credit score. You know, there's debt to income ratios and loan to value ratios, and there's credit history. It's not just the score. So it's really important, again, to lean on the professional, lean on that mortgage loan originator that's going to help you with your financing and they will guide you through those questions. Here's a question that I get a lot. Are there special programs for home buyers out there? So the answer is yes. There are some people that are looking for down payment assistance. There are programs sometimes from the state, from the county that you're searching in that provide down payment assistance. So those are certain programs that are available to first time home buyers. But we also have interesting programs available to buyers who may not quite be ready to purchase a home where we can still secure a home for you. An example of that is a uh, lease with the right to purchase. One of the programs that's been really popular with our customers, sometimes we'll get a buyer and maybe their credit score is a little low or maybe their time at their job is a little bit less than what's required. We can still help them secure a home. We have investors that will allow the resident to identify a home that they like. The investor will purchase the home with cash and then rent it to the resident until that resident is able to get a mortgage and purchase it from the investor. So that is a great, you know, Band-Aid if you're not quite ready to purchase a home yet or if you're not quite sure if you want to live in that location long term it's a great program and if you'd like more information I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about that but the short answer is yes there are special programs out there for buyers for new buyers who are purchasing a home a common question is how much money do I need for a down payment so the answer to this question is similar to lots of answers which the short answer is it depends right so there are different loan programs. If you're a veteran, a uh, military veteran, you can get a VA loan. A VA doesn't require a down payment. If you live in certain rural areas, you might qualify for a USDA loan. That doesn't require a down payment. Those are 100% financing programs. If you're a physician, medical doctor, there are programs out there that don't require a down payment. If you're none of those, then typically the lowest down payment option is an FHA loan, which is 3.5% down, so 3.5% of the purchase price as your down payment. There are also first time home buyer programs that require only 3% down. And if you want a conventional mortgage, the minimum down payment, they have a first time home buyer program with 3% down and the standard down payment minimum is 5%. If you give a minimum down payment, a lot of times you have to also pay mortgage insurance, which is a monthly 
fee on top of your mortgage payment and it protects the lender in case you were to default. So if you want to avoid mortgage insurance, then you would have to give 20% down. Not everybody has 20% down, but if you do, that's ideal and that's great. So the answer to that question is it depends and hopefully I answered it well for you. Another great question that buyers have is, are there any other fees that I have to pay in addition to the down payment? So there are other costs when you're purchasing a home. I'm gonna give you an example of some of those, commonly called closing costs. So your closing costs will consist of not only your down, well, your down payment is not a closing cost, but closing costs is in addition to your down payment. But uh, closing costs will include some title fees, title insurance to protect your lender, closing fees that are charged by the title company to help you close the transaction successfully. As you're leading up to the closing, there are gonna be some expenses that you have to pay. A home inspection fee, that can range $400 to $600. An appraisal fee to have the home appraised, that can range $400 to $600. So there are fees before you close, and then when you close, in addition to your down payment, there are closing costs and your lender will help you determine what those costs are. And to wrap this all up, one of the common questions we get is when do I get the keys? So in Florida, you get the keys on the closing day. So the closing is finalized once the buyer has signed all of the closing documents, the seller has signed all of the closing documents, and if you're getting a mortgage, the mortgage company has reviewed all of the signatures to make sure it was all done properly. Once all of that is done, then you are closed and you get the keys on the closing day and that's typically when you get to move into the home. Sometimes we can write in special terms if, if you have some unusual circumstances where sometimes a seller will want to stay in the home after the closing. It's not typical, it's not usual, but it can happen. But the buyer will almost always get the keys on the closing day. And if you have any other questions about the home buying process or the selling process, I'd love to answer those questions. You can always contact me at 407-375-9142. I'd love to help you out. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great rest of the day.